Hey everyone. All right, so we're doing day two of U substitutions. So pause the video and try this problem. All right, so antiderivative, I have got my one third. Antiderivative e to the x is e to the x minus two ln of x plus c. Let's see, one third, so it's this one. Because you have to distribute the three to this. And these are just weird. I don't even know what they were doing there. <laughs> All right, it's C. All right, pause the video, try it on your own. All right, so remember I said the last problem we did, a lot of times that uh, you want to start with you, if it's a fraction, let the denominator equal you. Another thing to think about, remember we're taking the derivative and then it needs to cancel. Whose derivative do you see in the problem? The derivative of x cubed is an x squared and there's an x squared up top. That's another clue that your u is the bottom so that that x squared can cancel out, right? So keep that in mind, the derivative is here somewhere and it needs to cancel. All right, so du dx equals 12x squared. And then I'm going to solve for dx. du over 12x squared. A lot of other teachers teach this differently, but I like my method. All right, so then we make our substitution for dx and for u. All right. I'm going to get rid of my 4x cubed minus 1, so u on the bottom. 5x squared stays, and then I'm going to replace my dx with du over 12x squared. The x squareds cancel. The numbers don't. That's okay. I usually stick those in front. So I've got 5 over 12, 1 over u, du. And notice it's an ln. Again, really common where we have that denominator and then ln of u plus c. So 5 over 12, the ln of 4x cubed minus 1 plus c, and that's our answer. Right. So hopefully this is getting easier for you. Okay, this one's horrible. I'm just telling you right now. I would never in a million years expect you to come up with this. I have to look it up every year. Like, I couldn't remember. I couldn't figure out how to do this. Um, I am really just want to show you so that you see it. I would never put this on a quiz or a test or anything. I don't know that the AP test would go that difficult. But I want you to be able to see it so that um, if it ever does come up. But I would never put this on a test. All right. So the problem here is you try to, there's nothing to substitute, right? If you replace secant with 1 over cosine, that's not helpful because it's not the derivative isn't present. So what you have to do for this one is we have to multiply the top and bottom by something. Kind of like when we were doing the um, definition of the derivative. It's like, where did they even come up with this? I don't know. We are going to multiply the top and bottom by secant of x plus tan of x. I have no idea where these mathematicians came up with this, but this is what we need to do to make this work. So I'm going to distribute the secant. So we get secant squared of x plus secant x tan x. All right, so now we're going to make our u substitution. u is the denominator, all right? So u is your secant x plus tan x. So I want you to try to see how far you can get with that, all right? So I'm get, telling you your u. See if you can go a little further. So we get our du dx equals derivative of secant is secant tan. And then tan is secant squared. 
So notice that actually is the numerator. That's what this is. That's your D. That's your, um, that's this guy. So DX is DU over all that disaster. Secant tan. Secant squared. So I can make my substitution. Secant squared. Secant tan. U, right, replacing the U, and then the DU over the stuff. The stuff cancels because it's a dis this is such a disaster problem. One over U, DU. So now finish it. That's the L and a U. And then I can make replace my U with my secant X plus tan X. I literally have no idea where this came. Like, how do people come up with this craziness? And it's sad, because, like, secant's a really basic problem. So my guess would be, like, if you were trying to do cosecant or something else, it would be something similar. Um, yeah, this is a crazy problem. I would never expect you to come up with that off the top of your head. Okay, this one's a little easier. It's very similar to the one we did yesterday with the square root. So see if you can figure this one out. This one is a little tricky though. All right, so u, now the question is, is u e to the x or is u e to the x plus one? Here's the thing, it doesn't matter. Doesn't actually matter. Um, I think I usually do one plus e to the x for this. I just said the bottom. Because in my head, if I use the bottom, what's the derivative of the bottom? e to the x is on top. So I know the derivative of the bottom exists, is present in the problem. So du dx is e to the x. So dx is du over e to the x. So now remember, we're not going to substitute for both of them. We're going to substitute in the bottom, our u, du over e to the x. We need that e to the x to cancel, so that top, top one's going to stay. So then those cancel, and yet again, notice, another 1 over u du. Right? No, these come up a lot. ln of 1 plus e to the x. Now, if you did it where u was just e to the x, what you could have done was the integral of e to the x over 1 plus u du over e to the x. You end up with the same thing in the end. Because um, you have here you would have the ln right in here. You'd have ln of 1 plus u instead of just u. Um, so you could do it that way too. It doesn't actually matter. All right. Take, t pause. I want you to really think about this one because this one is doable. It's still challenging. Again, these are not easy problems. I do recognize that. Um, but think about what is my U? The derivative of my, of my U has to be in the problem somewhere, right? The derivative of my U has to be in the problem somewhere. So pause and try it. So the derivative of X is just one. So that's not helpful, right? Another thing in this case is what's your inside? My inside is ln of x. Is the derivative of ln of x present? It is. It's kind of hidden, right? This is really 1 over x times 1 over ln of x to the 7th dx. The derivative of ln is right here. Right? So du dx equals 1 over x. So dx is x du. So that's what we're substituting in. So 1 over x. 1 over, my ln is being substituted, so I have u to the 7. x times du. My x is cancel. I'm going to write this as u to the negative 7 because it... It's easier in my brain. Some of you might be good at doing it 1 over u to the 7th. What's the antiderivative? But I like rewriting it. 
I can do the derivative, but the antiderivative I find harder. So I add 1, negative 6, divided by negative 6, plus c. So then we get negative 1 over 6 ln of x to the 6th plus c. And that's my final answer. All right, last one. Now, this one is a u substitution, but it's a little bit different. So, what are your instincts for this? Our instincts are typically to let u be the inside. So, if u is the inside, we get x minus 5. Right? That means, what's du dx? That's just 1, right? So that means du equals dx. So now if I try to make that substitution, I've got x, the square root of u, du. But I still have an x of the problem. Is there a way to get rid of that? Look back at that first line. u equals x minus 5. So what does x equal then? x equals u plus 5. So I'm going to substitute that in. u plus 5 times the square root of u du. Now, is that much different than what we started with? Not terribly. However, that is helpful. Because what can I do with this u that I couldn't do up top? This is u plus 5 times u to the 1 half. If I distribute u to the 3 over 2 plus 5u to the 1 half du. Oh, my pen just turned off. On, this, on the top one, the original, you can't distribute that x in. It would make it x squared, and then you're going to have a crazy inside. So that doesn't work. However, when we do the substitution, this is called change of variable, actually. Um, we're able to distribute in to get rid of having that inside. So now that you've seen that, pause and um, solve the rest of it. So I have u to the 5 over 2, 2 fifths, plus u to the 3 over 2. So that becomes 2 times 5 is 10 thirds, plus c. And then I make this substitution. So 2 fifths x minus 5 to the 5 over 2 plus 10 thirds x minus 5 to the 3 over 2 plus c. And that's it. This is a really specific problem. Like, this is pretty much the, what they always look like. They don't change these up very much. It's usually one of them. There's a root and then that and then that same variable on the outside. So this is a really specific problem, but it does pop up a lot. It's an important one to be able to know. All right, homework, 31 through 57 odd. So work on that now, um, and then we're going to finish it for homework.